Akira Uno is the creator of a game called The Infinity Game, which after 15 years is going to shut down. Tonight when the clock strikes midnight is when the servers are closing and he is spending the final moments reminiscing the game. He bids farewell to the last boss of the game, the demon lord of the great empire Hakuto Kunai, while remarking that he spread plenty of bloodshed and tears across the land. At midnight, he is suddenly transported into another world with a soothing voice telling him that this world has been abandoned by God and that this is the beginning of him. After he regains consciousness in the morning, he quickly realizes that he is in the body of Kunai, located in an unknown forest all by himself. Assuming that he is somehow inside of Infinity Game, he attempts to use his administrator privileges only to find out that they do not work. Realizing that he is not inside of the game he made, he lights himself a cigarette and ponders on the situation. This does not last long as he is interrupted by a young, injured girl coming his way. She is chased by a demon who makes the mistake of attacking Kunai. Kunai takes out the demon with ease, which makes the girl refer to him as the Demon Lord. She explains that the demon who chased after her was called Griol, and she was used as an offering to appease him by the villagers from her town. After she introduces herself as Aku, Kunai asks her if she knows about a country named Japan. However, she does not, and she tells him that they are now in the Kingdom of Holy Light, where people worship the Cherub, explaining how Cherub is the one that sealed away Griol a long time ago. Kunai asks her to show him where Griol's lair is as he wants to take a look around. Aku agrees and tells him that Griol used to be sealed in a place called the Wishing Shrine. On the way to the Wishing Shrine, Aku tells Kunai that it was thanks to the power of the shrine that Griol was sealed so long inside of it. Apparently, the shrine grants wishes to anyone who visits. Arriving at the entrance, Kunai notices the stench of death coming from it, so he goes in alone. There he finds a bunch of dead, robed people in front of a scary-looking statue of a woman. The statue speaks directly into his mind, introducing herself as Idol. She tells him that she has granted many wishes over the course of her existence, but this one will be her last. In the beginning, she used to be beautiful, but wicked wishes from bad people kept twisting her form, until she became as she is right now. She tells him that it was the dead cultists around him who summoned him, by wishing for the demon lord to descend. Once Griol found them, he slaughtered them in an attempt to stop the summoning, but he was too late. Kunai asks to be returned to his world, but Idol states how she cannot fulfill that wish, as it defies a previously made wish. Instead, she gives him a cursed looking ring in the shape of a skull, that Kunai is unable to take off his finger. Afterwards, the statue crumbles into dust. Returning back to Aku, Kunai asks her to direct him towards the capital, but she asks if she could come with him instead. After some deliberation, Kunai agrees, but before leaving, the two of them go to her village so she could gather her belongings. Arriving at the village, Aku gets intercepted by some townsfolk, who start throwing rocks towards her. Kunai gets pissed off by seeing this, and as he is about to act, he hears a voice from the ring. The voice starts aiding him on to dispose of all those he dislikes. Kunai refuses, explaining how he acted that way before only because it was in a game. The voice from the ring finds that amusing, calling him the root of all evil. He manages to block out the voice and act, stepping in between the bullies and Aku. Aku is grateful to Kunai, but as she refers to him as the Demon Lord, it only causes the bullies to get into a panic, cursing her even more for bringing the Demon Lord into the village. Kunai has had enough at that point and he sets fire to one of the houses before taking Aku and leaving. Aku wonders why he helped out someone like her, but Kumai corrects her, telling her to stop putting herself down, instead he praises her for doing a good job at living thus far. Aku is yet again surprised, but also happy to hear him say those things. The holy maiden called Luna is on the way with her unit to confront the demon lord who appeared, while a group of bandits is tracking her progress. Kunai and Aku are taking a break from traveling with Kumai using his abilities to create a temporary base where they can rest. Aku is amazed by his abilities, even more so when she finds out that the base has an improvised hot tub inside of it as well, not to mention commodities that she previously considered to be luxuries. Before turning in for the night, Kunai is pondering how he could return back to his world, deciding to look for more information once he reaches the capital. The next day, the bandits are setting up an ambush for Luna and her unit, but instead of Luna, it is Kunai with Aku on his back, who arrives to the location first. The bandits decide to deal with them before Luna arrives, so they launch their attack against Aku and Kunai. He repels their attack with ease, but before the fighting can continue, Luna arrives with her unit. Launching a wide-range magic attack, she strikes down the bandits, also catching Kunai in the blast, who has to take the attack in order to shield Aku behind him. Kunai demands an apology for her conduct, 
but Luna states that what she did was completely fine as she introduces herself to him. He makes fun of her in return, infuriated by Kunmai's conduct, she sends her unit to capture him. Luna's soldiers do not stand a chance against Kunai, and after knocking them out, he takes a hold of her. In order to set her straight, Kunai decides to discipline her with some hard spanking. Eventually, he relents and walks away with her coin pouch as compensation. Kunai and Aku arrive at the market city of Yagu, where Kunai decides to spend some of the money he got from Luna. After getting some snacks, they rent out the best room at the local inn. Afterwards, Kunai brings Aku to a clothing store, spending a large amount of money in order to get her a bunch of new outfits. Thanks to his generous spending, they dress up Aku like a princess. Once their shopping spree is over, the two of them go and have dinner at an expensive restaurant. Their meal gets interrupted by Luna busting in through the door. Kunmai reprimands her again, telling her to not cause disturbances like that or he will have to discipline her again. Luna calms down and joins them for dinner, even though it is all being paid by her money. Returning to their in room, they are followed by Luna, who says she has no place to stay thanks to them taking all of her money. Aku asks Kunai if he could be nicer to Luna, which causes him to relent, returning the rest of her money to her and allowing her to stay with them in the in-room. Aku and Luna get to know each other better, and Aku convinces Luna to give more information about the world to Kunai. From her, he learns more about the deities Often and Seraph, but apparently no one knows where they are. Kunai figures that Often must have been the statue idol, however, he needs to go to the holy capital to learn more on the matter. As he has no money and no source of income, he decides to pawn items from Japan that he can recreate with his ability to the local antique shop, explaining that they are from a faraway land. Since he has become known as a big spender in the town thanks to his shopping spree the day before, he manages to get an outrageous price for a worthless item. In the meanwhile, the demon-worshipping cultists, named Satanists, are preparing to act against the Holy Maidens. In front of the inn, another Holy Maiden Killer Queen, has arrived in order to lecture Luna. She is very vulgar and behaves like a delinquent. Luna and Queen get into an argument over her acting on her own against the Demon Lord. Kunai is nearby, observing what is going on, and in that moment the Satanists strike. Their attempt seems pointless as Queen and her unit, joined by Luna, are taking them out with ease. However, the cultists unleash a dark mist called Hades upon them, who drains them of their power and removes their divine protection. The tables turn and Kunai realizes he has to do something, but his ring starts acting up again, making it unable for him to move. Going through his options, he realizes he has the ability to switch characters, although he is unable to control it. Without any other option, he does so and Kunai gets replaced by Kirizama Zero. Once Zero enters the scene, his light power pushes Hades back with ease. Having no knowledge of what happened for him to appear here, he sees Luna and Queen nearby as they struggle to get back on their feet. Realizing that they were attacked by the cultists, he turns his focus towards the Satanists and proceeds to beat them up. His combat ability and manners resonate with Queen, making her fall in love with him on the spot. After checking up on Queen, Zero makes his exit, but so does a Satanist together with Hades. Two adventurers named Mikan and Yubikaze are hunting sandwolves for the guild. We learn that Yubikaze is quite unique as he dresses up and pretends to be a girl. The two of them end up biting off more than they can chew as a massive pack of sandwolves starts chasing after them. While making their escape, they run across Kunai, Luna, and Aku who are traveling via Luna's carriage. Kunai steps in and easily takes out the pursuing sandwolves, which makes Yukikaze develop feelings for him before parting ways. In order to take a break from the long time on the road, Kunai creates the temporary base once again, and Aku shows Luna how everything inside of it works. Thanks to the recently defeated Sandwolves, Kunai has gathered enough power to summon one of the helpers that served him in Infinity Game. After some deliberation, he decides to summon Yukarino. She is a genius doctor and scientist, so she should prove very useful with figuring out things about this world, as well as inventing a shield that can protect him from magical attacks better. After all, the world where Kunai is originally from had no magic, so if his abilities and stats are not well suited to fight against it. The summoning is successful and Yu appears before him. Kunai brings her up to speed with everything that happened. Thanks to her high intelligence, she is quick on the uptake. Afterwards, Kunai introduces Yu to Aku and Luna, explaining that she is his underling. He tells Yu to fix up Aku's injured foot, which she does with ease by using her Hand of God ability. Aku is overjoyed to be able to walk and run properly again, thanking Yu and Kunai from the bottom of her heart. Kunai praises Yu for a job well done, which triggers some unexpected feelings to emerge from deep within her. 
Getting overwhelmed by euphoria after being praised by him, she is determined to explore those feelings and learn more about herself and Kunai, since she feels like both of them are different now in this world than they were before. The Satanist cult is discussing their recent failure with their leader declaring that Hades needs more power. In order to power up Hades, they are going to destroy the holy capital. Kunai, Aku, Luna, and you arrive at Luna's village called Rabi, where she is the lord. The place is impoverished and in a bad shape overall as she forwarded the control of the village to the church, while she left to do other duties as a holy maiden. After deliberating with you, Kunai decides to set up his headquarters in her village. More precisely, he wants to set up a hospital and a hot spring resort. Luna does not seem too interested in the bigger picture, but as long as her allowance gets increased, thanks to the increased revenue from the village, she is okay with allowing them to do as they please. After releasing the church from their duty, they converse with the locals, who happen to be bunny folk. Luna explains that the bunnies were beloved by Cherub a long time ago, but now they are all located only in this town as the rest of the kingdom does not like any races other than humans. They meet with Momo and Kion, two of the bunny girls that work the farms. From them they learn about the poor harvests that the village is facing after the well and dried out. To fix the issue, Kunai creates a special pulley wheel from Infinity Game that makes sure even dried up wells always have water to pull out from. The bunnies are very happy about it, and when he creates some fertilizer for the farms they celebrate in advance, looking forward to their future harvests. In the holy capital, the head noble, Dona Dona, the head soldier, martial arts, and the eldest of the holy maidens, Angel White, are discussing Luna's decision to take over and rule her lands again. White is worried that Luna might be controlled by the demon lord, and Dona is trying to get them to act in that regard. But Marshall is advising against any military action for the time being, saying how his reports do not hint at that demon lord being an evil individual. White decides to wait for the time being, much to Doma's annoyance. Hey, thank you for staying all the way till the end. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. It takes only a second, but it means everything to us. Have a great day and see you in the next video.